Great yeast in the end zone. Here, whip a strike in the end zone for a touchdown to yeast again. Watch it throw across his body here against Penn State for the touchdown. Questionable arm strength. Think again. Tim Couch now feels like he is throwing the ball and is more comfortable than he's ever been. Look at that completion percentage. That's where the accuracy comes in. And he did this, Chris, against SEC competition, against some of the best athletes in the country. Tim Couch, to me, has a chance to be a superlative NFL quarterback. Well, 36 touchdowns, 15 interceptions last year, 72%. You mentioned almost 4,300 yards. Joe, there was a little question on the way he throws, but when you look at these guys over and over, are we being nitpickers? Yeah, we certainly are, Chris. And if I'm going to spend $27 million on somebody, I'm going to nitpick even. I'm going to nitpick by nitpicking. You have to look at him very closely. The reason I looked at Tim Couch as close as I did is I was uncomfortable with his grip. He has his, four, his index finger up real high on the ball. That causes him to palm the ball a little bit more and not really get the pop on it. When you look at the release, you look at the revolutions, the ball just looks like it just hangs in the air with a little bit of a wobble. And then here, you can count the revolutions when he releases the ball into the flat. This is a total of five revolutions, and the ball travels some 20 yards. That is not efficient nor sufficient enough to be able to go out and throw the ball well. Had a chance to sit with him last night. He's changed his grip. The, pi the picture on your right screen shows what he used to do where he didn't use the laces. And now you see him move his fingers back a little bit so that his pinky is on the laces. He's able to re re get more revolutions on the ball, therefore making it a tighter spiral and a harder throw. You talk about five revolutions. I got American, French, and Russian. What are the other two revolutions? The other two, Mexican? I'm going to come up with okay, the other two. All right, all right. Well we, well, we delved through the history books. There are some hot spots, certainly, below where the quarterbacks are being selected, maybe as early as the third pick. Cincinnati. Hot spots, hot buttons. Who better to discuss it? Mike Tirico, Chris Mortensen. Fellas? All right, Chris, thank you. If more decisions are made at one and two, is Cincinnati fielding offers, and what are they thinking about trading the number three pick? We heard Ed talk about Well, as Ed Werder mentioned, it, yes, Cincinnati is talked with the New Orleans Saints, but they have also made an outrageous demand of the uh, new, of the Saints. And well, here's what's going to happen. Right now, they are pretty much sold on their number one quarterback, Akili Smith. They will listen to New Orleans one last time. If the Saints want to call when they're on the clock, I think they're taking Akili Smith. If that's a tepid spot, then we've got the really hot spots where people are talking deal. Sean alluded to it at number four. Well, Ricky Williams right now holds the key, at least through the drama, I think, in this draft, and that is whether the Colts take him or not, and whether the Saints deal with Washington Redskins. Then it becomes really fluid at six with St. Louis and Chicago, and a couple of other trades to talk about here quarterback deals the Ravens have got a deal in the works for Tony Banks from St. Louis then the Ravens will do Eric Zire to Tampa Bay oh, this this concerns Dante Culpepper sure and all those things Oakland tried to trade up to get Dante Culpepper the headline story though from 4 to 11 could be deals done that's right we got hot some fun there hot spots to watch for sure boom all right guys well we could have the five quarterbacks as early as the 10 spot 11 or certainly by 15. That has never happened before in the history of the NFL draft. History making day. We'll be back. The new Acura RL has distinctive styling to appeal to your elegant side. Performance tuned suspension to satisfy your assertive side. And a sophisticated front and side airbag system to protect both sides. The new RL from Acura. This is great. I get fired on national TV. No, it could be worse. How could it possibly be worse, Frank? I think it just got worse. And now, Budweiser's replacement for Louis the Lizard. Now. The Ferret! This is not going to be good for my blood pressure. He's good. Don't encourage him, Frank. Hi, I'm Troy Aikman of the Dallas Cowboys. The NFL and the United Way this season are celebrating 25 years of working together to help our neighbors in need. Over the years, hundreds of NFL owners, coaches, and players to volunteer their time to work with United Way agencies and programs that show our caring for people in need. By working together, the NFL and the United Way are making a difference. The NFL, the United Way in you, the power of teamwork.
the Cleveland Browns. Great history. And the history resumed here in 1999. The Browns are on the clock, and there is the look uh, inside the war room. Carmen Policy, the dapperly dressed Carmen Policy, would expect nothing less. The vice president, GM, and former hero in San Francisco, now hopefully hero in Cleveland, Dwight Clark is in there in the Browns. Of course, not a lot of suspense, but they have 13 picks throughout the day. We will go there early and often. Will this class of 99 be similar to the class of 1983, in which John Elway was drafted, you forget, by Baltimore, but of course, by the end of the day, uh, he was traded, and the rest was history. Todd Blackledge by the Chiefs was the next pick that year. Look at the youngster, Jim Kelly by the Bills, but he was playing the USFL. Tony Easton led the Patriots to a Super Bowl. Ken O'Brien had a good career with the Jets, and some guy named Marino, the sixth quarterback taken in 1983. He's had a decent career with the Miami Dolphins. Elway, Marino, and maybe Jimbo, Hall of Famers from that draft. So the question, does this draft in 1999 compare to that draft in 1983? You can only grade on the way they came out. How does it shape up at this time, though? Numbers-wise, it compares. I think mobility-wise, this group in 1999 has the edge. I think pure passing ability coming from pro-style attacks, the 83 class had the edge. And how much that will translate into these quarterbacks needing some time to develop We'll have to find out, and Joe. I think that's the big question. Will this group be able to come in there, force fed now in the NFL? How quickly will these quarterbacks have an impact in the NFL? I don't care about the 83 class. What about the 71 class? <laughs> when you had Plunkett, you had Manning, you had Pastorini. Oh, by the way, they went one, two, three in the draft. There also happened to be a fourth round pick by the name of Theismann that played in that particular class. Not that I'm prejudiced about it one bit, but I do. Th <laughs> I do think that, as Mel alluded to it, that the biggest difference in this group of young men coming out is the thing that you have to stress and look at is their athletic ability. Every one of them has exceptional athletic ability, and they have to to play against the defenses today in the National Football League. Everybody wants the quarterback to be able to move around, slide in a pocket, make plays. Every one of these quarterbacks has that ability, but every one of them has a lot of things that they have to work on before they can get to the level where you can call them bona fide stars in the National Football League. The guy that was drafted in 71 was Thiesman, wasn't it? That's it wasn't right. It was, it was actually, it was Thiesman. It was Thiesman, actually. Yeah, but we, we're still a debate. I think <laughs> with Thiesman. Boy, Mike, Jim Kelly was a young pup once upon a time. That was an interesting picture, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was. He has 101 wins in the class of 83's total. Class of 83, by the way, 160 games over 500 as NFL starters. Is this class better? What's the biggest difference? I think the biggest difference is the athletic ability of these quarterbacks. I mean, you look at all the Dante Culpepper, uh, runs a 4'6", 4'5", I mean, 250 pounds. They have the mobility to make the play on the run. The class of 83, more of a pocket-style pass. Dan Marino, John Elway, yes, he could get around. Myself, pretty much like to stay in the pocket, but that's the biggest difference, probably the athletic ability and them being able to make things happen on the run. Project for me as we look at the production of this class. Will they be better than you guys when it all said and done? They put up great numbers in uh, in their uh, college days, just like you guys did. But look at these pro numbers you guys I mean, put you, up. You can't compare that. 484 wins amongst us. Maybe six, seven years from now, maybe you'll be able to say something about that. But uh, 11 Super Bowls, 484 wins. Only, yeah, only Kenny with 50 and 59 record was the only one of that group under 500 for his career. More from Jim and Boomer Siason later on. Head back to Boomer Berman. That's quite a class. A class that's made its mark on the NFL for two decades. And now let's go up to the commissioner for the first, first pick of the new Cleveland in the 1999 draft. The Cleveland Browns selection is from the University of Kentucky quarterback Tim Couch. This is a young man from a town of 350, Hyden, Kentucky, coal mining town in southeastern Kentucky. The nearest movie theater is 25 miles away. The nearby towns, his dad, Albert, is from Thousand Sticks, Kentucky. <laughs> Hell for certain Kentucky is right down the road. Hazard, Kentucky is right down the road. And from that small town, Tim Couch has proven himself at the University of Kentucky. He's made everyone in the community and the state proud. And now he is the first player selected ever by the Cleveland Browns. It's a wild ride, but you know, I think he has his feet on the ground. We spoke with him a little bit last night. And by the way, welcome back to the NFL, Cleveland Browns. We did miss you very much so. It'll be good to see the new dog pound again. Tim Couch in Cleveland.